heating the heat shield up to 2,600 degrees centigrade. We take out 99% of the energy of the incoming vehicle through the next four minutes going through the atmosphere and about 90% of the entry velocity, such that by the time we finish using the heat shield, we're traveling at about 1,100 miles per hour, at which point our parachute deploys, and the parachute deploys at approximately Mach 1.5, about 15 seconds later, if the video catches up, the heat shield will deploy, will separate from the vehicle. Uh, this is obviously in real time. Once the heat shield deploys, that's when we turn on our landing radar. Our landing radar is our first lock, our first physical measurement of where the ground is. Before that, we use all of our simulation and all of our analysis and uh, navigation. We separate from the back shell. We're now at about 125 miles an hour, and we have locked on the surface, and we use our propulsive descent engines. There are 12 68-pound engines that are pulsed to vary the uh, position and vary the uh, attitude of the vehicle as we come down to the surface. Not shown in this vehicle, but undoubtedly what we expect is we'll be kicking up a significant amount of dust as we mm -hmm. land. Uh, as uh, Fook mentioned, we, we touch down at approximately 5 miles per hour. We wait approximately 15 minutes after touchdown for the dust that we expect to be in the atmosphere to settle. And then one of the most critical things that we wait for after touchdown is the deployment of our solar arrays. Right after cruise stage separation, the vehicle is now depleting its energy that is stored on an onboard uh, batteries. And we have to get the solar arrays open such that we can start getting the vehicle into what we call a power positive state in that what we're saying is we're taking more energy in from the solar arrays than we are consuming, keeping the vehicle alive and doing the operations that we expect to do on the surface of the planet. So over the past five years, we've been testing, we've been analyzing, we've been simulating all the activities for this one 15-minute critical event that's coming up this coming Sunday. And to talk a lot more about the testing and the spacecraft, I'll hand it over to Ed, Ed right now. Okay, thanks, Barry. Uh, I'll start out with the spacecraft status. Uh, as Barry's indicated, we had a very clean flight to Mars to this point. The spacecraft has been very well behaved, and that's allowed the team to really focus.